Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve. So here's a bit of a schematic that I've rustled up. So let's just label some key structures. So I'm just going to split the brainstem up here. So this structure would be our cerebellum. Up here we're going to have our midbrain. Here we are going to have our pons and here we have our medulla oblongata. This structure here is supposed to represent the foramen magnum, which is the point at which the brainstem is going to exit the skull. And superior to the foramen magnum is the medulla oblongata, as I've said, but below the foramen magnum is when we start calling the brainstem the spinal cord. Okay, let's just clear the drawing. Now what I've tried to do is I've tried to colour code things, so let's draw a little key. So we're going to say anything in blue is going to be talking about sensory information and anything in green is going to be referring to motor. So you can see that we have three blue sensory nuclei in the brainstem and one green and also that we have some blue nerves and a green nerve and what these are representing are a sensory root of the trigeminal nerve and a motor root of the trigeminal nerve and you'll see that these both are leaving the pons. I also want to point out that the motor root is not as big as I've drawn it there but I've drawn it large so that you can can see a little bit more clearly. And then you can see that just going through the sensory root or continuing on from the sensory root we've got this thing here and this is our trigeminal ganglion. Trigeminal ganglion. And this is quite easy to see in dissections because it's rather large. And this trigeminal ganglion is held in, or is, is sort of bound by two layers of dura. And this is called Meckel's cave. Meckel's cave. And this is in the middle cranial fossa. And then you'll see that once we've got this ganglion, we've then got some splitting. We've got three divisions of sensory nerves. We have V1 this guy, V2, this guy, and V3, which will be this guy. And these three divisions have names. So this first division, V1, is ophthalmic branch. And I want to draw your attention to the spelling of ophthalmic, there's an H there. V2 is called the maxillary branch. And V3, which is going to be distal to this structure here, which we'll talk about in a minute, is going to be our mandibular branch. And hopefully that you'll remember that Scott did a video on looking at um, where the cranial nerves enter and exit the skull. And these are what these things are trying to represent. These are supposed to represent our foramina. So we have three here. Well, actually we have... Um, we have two foramina and one fissure. So this one, the ophthalmic branch, because it's a sensory branch, because it's in blue, this is going to enter the skull through the superior orbital fissure. Then as for our maxillary branch, which is V2, sensory again, it's going to come from the periphery to the brain stem, and this is going to enter the skull through the foramen rotundum. And then lastly, we have our mandibular branch, which you can see here contains both motor information, so motor information is going to exit the skull through this um, foramen and then you've got the blue sensory information which is entering the skull through this foramen and this is the foramen ovale. What I want you to notice is that we have two separate branches, we have the motor branch which is leaving the brain stem at this point here and it's travelling through the foramen ovale with the mandibular branch and then it's distal to that that the motor branch will join V3 and it will continue as a mixed nerve so this bit here where I've drawn it in red is going to be mixed so this is going to carry both the information that is motor and sensory so you might be thinking to yourself well, what's the point of this big ganglion well, the trigeminal ganglion is a little bit analogous to the dorsal root ganglion in the periphery. And this is where it's go you're going to be containing, or within it, is going to be the pseudo-unipolar cell bodies. 
So if this was a sensory branch coming from V1, its cell bodies are going to be held in the trigeminal ganglion and then axons are going to project to um, these nuclei. So you'll rightly or you'll hopefully remember what a pseudo-unipolar cell is. So a pseudo-unipolar neuron has two axons. It has a central axon and it has a peripheral axon. So central and peripheral. And the cell body is here. There are no dendrites. So that's a, a sort of in contrast to other types of neurons. So no dendrites, only axons. And these um, pseudo-unipolar cell bodies are going to be held within our trigeminal ganglion. Now before I start talking about these nuclei and, and what they do, we know that there's a huge sensory distribution. We know that there's V1, V2 and V3 and this is going to be collecting all the sensation from the face. So whereabouts does V1, V2 and V3 take sensory information from? Well, here we go. So I like to think that this looks like a profile view of Scott. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is that everything in orange is going to relay sensory information via V1. Everything in blue is going to carry information, sensory information via V, sorry, via V2, so the maxillary branch, and the red bit here, um, all this information is going to travel via V3. So if you were to see a drawing like this without the um, V1, V2 and V3 on, hopefully you'd be able to know that V1 is the orange bit, V2 is the blue and V3 is the red. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.